Finding your style of photography can be the funnest part of this journey. And after a while of trying a few styles, you know exactly what you like to capture and what styles can take a back seat. But after a while, your curiosity is gonna get the best of you. And you'll wanna take a crack at those styles that you didn't think that were for you, but you want the challenge. Here's where things can get tricky, but even more important, costly. So trust me, you're gonna wanna stick around because I'm gonna show you today how you can eliminate those costs from piling up on you. Also, everything that we talk about today is super necessary. If you wanna save a few thousand dollars and smash whatever style you're trying to create. Welcome back everyone, I'm James Alcatraz. And I think it's imperative that you switch your styles up every once in a while. It eliminates skill stagnation and it forces us to work out those creative muscles. But this can lead you down a path where you're spending a hundred here and 600 there only to realize you didn't need to spend that much. Here are some things we can do to limit those costs. We should always use what we already have. Sounds simple, right? But here's where it gets tricky. Let's just say you're getting into product photography and let's say you have a decent light source but you notice that some of the lighting from it is a little harsh. So then you start scrolling online, you do some research and you come across the softbox that only costs $80. That's not too bad. Wrong. Let's remember, we're just getting started with this style and you might get bored of it within a week or two. And now look at us, we're already buying something that we might not even need. And more importantly, it's gonna take up so much space in your, in your creative room or wherever the hell you're doing your things from. Before even looking to get that softbox off of Amazon, we should have used all of our resources and exhausted every single option. If we really wanted to soften that lighting, we could have used a t-shirt. We could use some bed sheets and even parchment paper. Believe it or not, I've seen professional photographers use this for their client's work. I'm using it right now for this video. And look, when we buy things off of Amazon, that's how the costs start piling up. $30 here, $80 there isn't earth shattering. But when it piles up over a few weeks, it can be. Hey you, if you're enjoying this video, give that like button a tap. It really helps our channel grow. I appreciate it. Another thing that we can do is reach out to a friend or get in a group of other photographers and see if they'll lend you some of that equipment. This is especially helpful if they're into the same style that you're trying to conquer right now because they will have gear ranging from, from beginner to professional level that they probably grew out of at some point. Not only will they save you a lot of money, but it'll also start developing a rapport with other photographers and they'll start to know like, hey, we can let this guy borrow some of our expensive equipment and he's good for it because he's always gonna give it back to us. And remember, make sure to give back down the road. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you've tried. And if you have, let me know how it went. Okay, for this last one, you gotta be very careful because it's dangerous. It's flirting right on the edge of destruction. Order things off of Amazon with the intention of returning what you're not gonna use. Let's say you order five things, and out of those five things, you only need one. Well, now you have to make sure that all the pieces from the other items are all together. You have to have the original packaging. You then have to get online, get the return labels, drive yourself to a UPS store, and then you don't even know what could happen between that time. What if you break something? Now you gotta deal with the vendor. Another thing to keep in mind is just how long you're gonna have before you can't return it anymore. I always think I have so much time, and then before I know it, two months have passed and now I'm stuck with something that I'm never gonna use and I paid a lot of money for it. Listen, getting into a new style can be very costly, but if you follow these tips, you'll be able to switch up your style often without breaking your bank account. And more importantly, it won't sour your love for photography. If you found this video entertaining or informative, please leave me a like. Leave me a comment if there's a topic that you want me to explore or a question that you want answered. Now that we saved a lot of our hard earned money, let's get out there and pursue our passions.